Reformed Church. It was eye-opening for me when I initially read this verse, and then just when it comes to memory, you know, uh, when it comes to my mind, I always try to just turn to it and just read it again. But, um, and, and it's all around, you know, the, how unnecessary, how unnecessary it is for us to suffer, how unnecessary it is for us to go through the things that we go through, you know, and, and the, the fact that I say unnecessary is because if, if Jesus would not have done what he did, then there would be necessity for suffering. There, there would be necessity for the death that's seen in our lives. There would be necessity for many things that are seen in the lives of people. But, but, but yet there is, because there is suffering or problems and contentions and a bunch of things, you know, in our lives, you know that it, if in our acknowledgement of the Lord, right, in us growing in what the Lord has done, you end up seeing how unnecessary these things are. And as long, if you see them as necessary, then you'll, you'll suffer through them and you'll feel like, oh yeah, like this is just what's supposed to happen. But if you see how unnecessary things are, right, uh, and obviously th that just, again, that, that part of seeing something as unnecessary can only be actually seen through the knowledge of Christ, right? You, you, don't, you, don't, you don't learn that something is unnecessary in your lives as far as what we're talking about by just saying to yourself that they're unnecessary, right? They're only seen through the knowledge of Jesus. And, and, and 1 Peter chapter 5, 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse number 10, 1 Peter 5, 10 says, but may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal uh, glory by Christ Jesus. So even right there, he says, he, he says, he reminds us of what we're called to, right? He, he and, and that's important, right? Because you, you need to know what the Lord has called you to, what you have access to. And, and then he tells you the, un, the, how unnecessary certain things are, but he's telling you that he's called us unto his glory, right? Called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, right? So we know what we're called to, and we know why we're called to that, right? Because it's because of what the Lord has done that we're called to what we're called to. Then he says, after you have suffered a while, it says, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you, right? That there, that there, is, uh, that there is a growing in faith, right, that makes suffering in our lives and problems in our lives and things that we're going through in our lives makes them uh makes them not just unnecessary but that you don't you you, you end up not having to go through those things right it, it doesn't mean that things don't try to happen to you it doesn't mean that other people don't try to do evil against you it's just that it's just that there are there are times in your lives where these things become they, they become irrelevant right i mean whether somebody wants to try to hurt you or not it's irrelevant right because they it's not something that they can just get away with and do as they please with you right it, it, so um so so it is you know as i as just thinking about that that's just a verse that kind of came came to mind but what where the root of all this kind of is coming from just to give you background a little bit it was it started you know thinking about what we um from sunday about eating the bread of life right that it, he, he, we saw in Exodus chapter 16 how Moses said to them, he said, eat the bread today for today is the Sabbath, right? Eat today for today is the Sabbath. And we, we know that, that, uh, that bread obviously signifies life, right? And that Jesus Christ is called the bread of life because that's why he came, right? He came from heaven just like the manna had come from heaven, right? Jesus came from heaven and he came to bring us life and to bring us life abundantly. So not only for us to be able to possess that life on the inside, but also so that it would abound, right, outwardly, so that it would manifest outwardly. So it's not something just that we possess inside, but something that affects our daily lives, right? Um, so, so in thinking about that, when we're thinking about what, uh, Moses just saying, eat today for today is the Sabbath, right? You get an understanding that, that all of the things that the Lord has been teaching us throughout the years about being partakers of his divine nature, right? That, that grace and peace has multiplied to us through the knowledge of him, that, that we become partakers of his divine nature through the knowledge of him, right? That, that all of this good stuff that the Lord has taught us over the years it's necessary, right? It's so necessary for us to remember, right? 
It's so, so necessary for us to remember because if we, if we don't remember, and, and I'm telling you, it's important to remember every second of the day, every minute of the day. But, but I get it that there are certain people that believe that they have certain limitations and, and that they can't, that that's not something that's possible. But that, that also is untrue, right? Because by the Spirit of God, you have the ability to live with a mindfulness every second of the day, every minute of the day, every hour, every week, every month, every second of every moment, right? You have the ability to live with the mind of Christ, right? Now, just because you don't see that manifest, it does, it, it, in other words, not seeing something as, oh, well, that's not possible, that's, you know, or I'm just this, or I'm just that. In other words, to, to go on unnecessarily suffering and going through stuff, thinking that something is normal just because it's worldly or just because it's natural, right? But that we would see, allow the Spirit of God to remind us. And, and the cool thing about this is there are lots of ways <laughs> that the Lord uses to remind us, right? Uh, so, but before we talk about the reminder, let's just think for a second and just remember, what is He reminding us about, right? He's reminding us about Jesus Christ and him crucified and the glory that followed, right? That, we have to know that that's his method in our lives, right? He, that's what he wants to remind you of. That's what the Spirit of God testifies. That's, that, that's, that's what the Lord has been testifying of since the beginning of time, right? He, he has always been testifying about the same thing, and he continues to testify in us about the same thing. Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now, we know that that's what he wants to remind us about, right? Now, if you think about it, what, what problems, what suffering is there in your life? What things do you go through? What, when, when, even when you think about like contentions and problems, right? When you think about jealousies and envies, and I think Pastor Mike just put out an article not long ago on that. But if, let, me, let me just bring you to a, a quick, quick verse. Uh, if we can go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, look at verse number 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 11. I, I think this is King James, New King James Version, but... Um, it says, for it has been declared to me concerning you, my brethren, that those of Chloe's household, that there are contentions among you. He says, now I say this, uh, that each of you says, I am of Paul, or I am of Apollos, or I am of Cephas, or I am of Christ. So, so the problem was there was issues, and they're saying that they're of this church and that church, and they follow this leader, and they follow that leader, right? But he says, verse 13 says, as Christ divided, was Paul crucified for you, right? So what, what he's saying is, and, and it's the same every single time, right? Our, our, our lack of mindfulness of what Jesus has done is what causes natural, natural mindfulness to be obviously, first of all, in our mind and then to be in our actions, right? So, so, so when he says, was Christ crucified for you, was Paul crucified for you, he, he's, he's not trying to be smart or snarky about what he's saying he's trying to bring their mind back to what the spirit of god on the inside of them is constantly testifying to them about if they would listen right if we would listen constantly testifying about jesus christ and him crucified right we we look at situations and we think oh there there's natural ways of dealing with situations we deal with situations naturally because we're not listening to the lord that's why we deal with situations naturally we we plan natural plans and fixes to our problems because we're thinking naturally when you think naturally you're going to think of natural fixes to your problems right when you think according to the spirit of god the mindfulness of the spirit of god the remembrance of what the lord has done right will bring you to a place in your life where you can where you can see things clearly for the, for exactly what they are and see the resolution that christ brought to our problems right um in uh let, 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 let's keep going a little bit more same 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 chapter um verse 14 says i, I thank my god that i baptized none of you except crispus which is a funny name and gaius he said lest any one should say I just think like like how you have a name like Crispus and somebody don't call you Crispy, you know, like that's just, but maybe it was a, a popular name back then. Anyway, uh, verse number 16 says, yes, I also baptized, it says the household of Stephanas. Besides, he says, I do not know whether I baptize any other. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not, in, not with, wor with wisdom of words, lest the cross 
of Christ should be made of no effect. So you know what his preaching. So he was called to preach the gospel. And then he says, not according to the wisdom of words. In other words, not according to natural wisdom. But he says, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. But the thing is, you don't, you're not called to preach the cross unless you have the cross in abundance in your mind. right? You can't, you can't preach the cross unless you forget all things except Jesus Christ and him crucified. You can't preach the cross as long as you have... Uh, things in your life that you consider to be advantageous to you, in, in other words, in your thinking. You, you actually believe, and unfortunately, that's why a lot of the preaching in the church is the way it is, because people will think that they're preaching the cross, but yet in the same breath, talk about how advantageous some natural things are, right? Well, when you see th natural things as not advantageous, when you see natural things as those are not the things that prosper me, but instead you see Christ in him crucified, right? Then, then you, you begin you can preach then the gospel, right? But there is no real true preaching of the gospel when in your mind what is in abundantly in your heart is the advantage that you have because you do this, because you do that, because you have this talent, because you have the other talent, because you're, you're able to do this, because you're able to do that, because you have strength to do this, because you have strength to do that, right? So he says, verse 18, he says, for the message of the cross, which is the message that every single person, listen, th there are no problems in your life. There are no problems in your life that you consider a problem in your mind that do not stem from the lack of understanding of what Jesus has done for you, right? If, 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 if I, I just was, I, I just jotted a couple of things down. Impotence or powerlessness against things in your life, right? Lack of knowledge of what Jesus has done. Guilt or condemnation over anything that you have ever done or will ever do, right? Lack of understanding of what Jesus Christ has done for you. Works of the flesh of any kind, right? Lack of understanding of what Jesus Christ has done for you. Any wrong thinking, period, right? Is lack of understanding of what Jesus Christ has done for you, right? We, we, we talk about Reformed Church being a church that preaches the message of the cross, right? But the thing is that there is no other message that the church needs to be reminded of. There is nothing else that the church needs to testify to the church about apart from what Jesus Christ did because anything else is put in their mind on some other thing that might be advantageous to them. Therefore, there it goes making the message of the cross of none effect, right? Because when you introduce something else as a different way, when you introduce something else as a, a, a form of doing something, right? It, it's just, you know... You see why it is that he says, and I'm just going to kind of paraphrase this, but how, how when, when our heart is not, I believe it's in James, but when, when your heart is not being renewed, right, by the message of Jesus Christ and him crucified, that, that, that's, where, that's where our lives become, there's so much disorder in our lives, right, where we're, it's, not, it's not just one thing that's impacted in your life, right, it's every single thing that's impacted in your life. So, and, and, then, and then especially for us here, right, we, we, we hear the message of the cross on a regular basis, right? I'm not saying that every single thing that I preach is perfect, right? But you're reminded constantly about the message of the cross, right? W where do you go from, from the place where you're at, where you're going to a church where you're constantly being preached the gospel, right? The, what is missing is our remembrance, right? When the Lord said, this is my body and this is my blood, he says, as often as you eat and you drink, he says, do this in remembrance of me. What, what was he saying? He was giving you a, a method, something even natural, right, by what, to help you to do what? To remember. To remember who? To remember how awesome he is or to remember him crucified and the glory that followed, right? To remember the body and the blood. To remember the body and the blood. To remember the cross. Prayer, what is it, right? When you pray, it's for what purpose? It's to be able to remind you, right? To remind you. You, you, you start, you start, you start praying from the top of your mind, right? And as, you, as you're mindful of the Spirit of God and you're acknowledging Him, the Spirit of God takes over and begins to remind you and remind you and remind you and to bring to your mind the things that you should be mindful about, right? Otherwise, if you're not, if you're not praying, if you're not, if you're not acknowledging the Lord in all of your ways, what are you doing? You're acknowledging yourself, you're acknowledging your problem, you're having a pity party, and you're bringing other people into it, right? We have to be able to be people that can not only be reminded at church, but also take on the responsibility upon ourselves to remind ourselves, right? In other words, to put our, our mind in a position to allow the Lord to remind us. And that's not applicable to one of us in here. That's applicable to every single one of us, right? 
every single one of us, we need to remember. We need to remember, right? It's not good enough to come to church every service. You need to remember how often, as often as you can remember. How often should it be? Every second of every day, we should be aware. Every second of every day. And every second of every day that you're not, it is against you and not for you, right? It's working against you, not for you, right? So suffering is unnecessary. Heartache is unnecessary. Tears are unnecessary. Pain is unnecessary. If you're going through it, fine. You're going through it, we're growing. No, though, it's unnecessary. And every time you see Jesus Christ and him crucified, you recognize that's why it's unnecessary. That's why it's unnecessary. And as as you forget, you will forget and you will suffer through things and and you'll, you'll, you'll be looking, even though you may not pray it out loud that way because we've learned better, right? But you're thinking in your mind, I wish I could be rid of this. Right? You see, you see how it, it is. It's not hard to forget, right? It's not hard to forget. How often was, was Peter taught, right? How often were the apostles taught? And he was the one that prayed and asked God three times to take from him something that the Lord had already taken from him. And the, and the Lord reminds him, he says, don't you recognize what I have done for you and that what I have done is sufficient for everything you'll ever need, right? You, you've forgotten, right? What is it that happens in our lives? We forget. We forget. When we become obsessed, which I, I told Michael the other day, I don't know if you were watching a movie or it was two shows or what it was. We were at home. I think it was just Kim and, and Michael were there. And I was just saying, you know, this obsessed word, like people are just obsessed with the obsessed word. Like, like they just want to, uh, I'm just obsessed with this. And they mean it like, like it's in a good way. I'm obsessed with this or, or this is my thing, right? Like this is my thing or, or the other thing is my thing or this is what I like to do or that's my stuff, right? And all they're saying is, you know what? Every minute that you, pe- you spend in your thing and in your stuff and in your hobby and in your junk, you're spending it not on where your mind should be. So basically all that time you do that, It's time that you could spend with your heart prospering the way it should, right? Your your heart can. You can put yourself in a position where you are constantly profiting in your mind from what Jesus has done. And then that brings you to a place where we can be, we can live in a place where we are constantly profiting, constantly profiting in our lives from the grace in which we stand. Constantly, constantly, right? Right? So, so when, when you hear stuff like pray without ceasing, right? To most people, that sounds ridiculous. How could I do it without ceasing? But you see, what is it that he wants? He says, as often as you do, remember me. Remember me. It's not his pretty face that the Lord wants us to remember, right? It's, it's not good enough to even go to the right church. That's not even good enough, right? It has to be that we need to see the responsibility, the, the work that the Lord has given us, right, to acknowledge him in all our ways. That is not a small verse. That is not a popular Reformed church verse. That is the truth of what our lives should be. That's the truth of what our lives should be. If you don't, right, if you don't remember that it's all about what he did and not about what you do, you're going to try to be great parents, right? You're going to try to be great employees. You're going to try to be great this. You're going to try to be a good that. You're going to try to be a good pastor, You're going to try to be a good employee. You're going to try to be a good citizen. You're going to try all of this stuff in your own effort, which is of no use whatsoever. It is just impotence after impotence. It's just, it's, and he says, you know what? After you have suffered for a little while, did you know that after, after that, you can actually, it can, it can actually be over with, right? By just becoming established in the truth, right? Becoming established in the truth. And, and still, even in that, you know, whenever you hear that again, and I'll stop here, but whenever you hear that again about praying without ceasing, that, that's very meaningful to me right now, right? Because, because I, I, I hear the Lord loud telling me in my mind, right? This is something you constantly need to do. Constantly, constantly. You know, I, I acknowledge, I acknowledge, I know when I'm being cranky, I know when, when, when something that shouldn't be coming out of my mouth is coming out of my mouth, right? But, but, but it's not enough. It's not, it's not enough to acknowledge when, when, when something that has happened and you're like, yeah, you know what, that ought not to be like that. The point is, you know what, that ought not to even happen. It doesn't have to happen. It doesn't have to be that way. 
doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't matter what you've accustomed yourself to, right? Some people have accustomed themselves to being rich, counted it at his advantage. Some people count, have accustomed themselves to being poor, and they say, well, that's just, and they're just used to being that way, right? It doesn't have to be one way or the other. It could be Christ Jesus and him crucified across the board for everything and be prospering in every single thing and in every single way because of just one thing because we have continued in our obedience, right? Just because we continue to attend here does not mean you have continued in your obedience, right? Hearing is not coming to church. Hearing is listening to the Spirit of God and acknowledging Him in all of your ways. So there is more room for obedience, right? And I'll stop right there. There is more room in every single one of our lives for more obedience. We have not arrived in our obedience, right? We are not there right? There is more room to continue in our obedience, and we will see the fruit of it in our lives, right? But, and I, I, you know, I don't don't know if just, you know, like, I I feel like so passionate about this right now, you know, but but truthfully, and and I, I feel passionate about Jesus Christ and him crucified, on a regular basis in my life, but it, 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 this just feels like, just like it, it just feels urgent in my mind, right? And, and, and maybe, to be honest with you, maybe this urgency and maybe this passion, quote-unquote, which is probably a horrible word, right? But maybe, maybe those two things is just the way we ought to live, right? Maybe those two things is just the way it just always ought to be, right? But, but to, know, to know, you know what, Lord? I have, I have room to grow, and I, I, I want to continue to grow in the knowledge of what you've done, right? But, but, but also know this. I have to grow in the mindfulness of what you've done, right? Because you could learn everything that there is to know about Jesus. You could hear everything that there is to hear about what he's done for you, right? And the part that you'll still be missing is the mindfulness of all that you heard and learned, right? The mindfulness of all that you heard and learned. The, the acknowledging of all that you've heard and learned, right? we'd still be going back to the same thing, the mindfulness, right? The acknowledgement of every single thing that the Lord has done so that we can be mindful of that, right? All day long, every single minute of the day, every second of every hour. We hope you enjoyed this message from Reformed Church. If you have, please share this with someone else and help us get this unpopular message to the world. If you'd like to support Reformed Church, you can do so at Reform in us dot com slash give also on our website you can take advantage of our free messages articles and even full discipleship courses start reforming your mind now at reforminus.com.